Astrophotography is a very complex hobby to pursue. Once you get past using a star tracker and a DLSR camera or a mirrorless camera where you have it on a um, shutter release where you can set it up so that it will just take photo after photo after photo and you got the star tracker. Once you move past that, you then have to start thinking about how are you going to control and manage the data acquisition piece of astrophotography. And there's a lot of options out there. I mean, uh, I first cut my teeth on APT, astrophotography tools, which was a fantastic application. And I was just recently looking at it just because I have another fellow astrophotographer who loves APT. And you know, APT's come a long ways from when I was playing with it a couple years back. There's a lot of new and great features in there. And then there's always a whole debate among astrophotographers as to whether or not to go the ASCOM route or the ND route in terms of uh, the driver integration and communications between all the different disparate pieces of equipment. And of course, it ends up always having a discussion when you talk with astrophotographers about Nina. Nina seems to be the bull in the china closet. Nina seems to be that particular control software that people either love or they hate. And typically those that really are fearful of Nina are those who really have, haven't had the opportunity to really play with it and try it, but instead they're focused on the complexity of it. What I really want to go over today is why Nina? With all the options that are out there, why would anybody choose to use Nina? Hi, I'm Dave of Urban Astro and welcome to my channel. I've been using Nina now for, I think, almost a couple of years. I find that Nina answers what I need for acquisition software to do. Now, one of my goals, one of my primary goals, after I had moved past the Star Tracker and my mirrorless uh, Sony camera, was to try to automate my system and to be able to use multiple different pieces and components from different manufacturers, kind of, so that I could pick, if not the best of class, at least pieces of equipment that I thought would help me achieve the goal of automating my system as much as I possibly can. And so for me, that's why I decided to go down the Nina route, or some people would probably say the Nina rabbit hole. It can be very complex. It can be like diving into the deep end of the pool and you're wondering, Am I ever going to figure this thing out? Am I ever going to make it work? And the truth of the matter is, is yes, you will. And as the old adage goes, you eat an elephant a bite at a time. And it's the same thing with Nina. You master Nina as much as you need to master it, one thing at a time. You slowly add more and more features and more and more functionality that you want to explore with your rig depending on what your goals are. Now a lot of astrophotographers that I know they like to be with their rig through the whole entire imaging process and Nina can work for that. Uh, I know of astrophotographers who have Nina loaded up on their laptops and they plug all their stuff into their laptops and they sit beside their rig and basically they are there from the beginning of data acquisition all the way through to the end. I'm not that kind of astrophotographer. I used to be back in the old days, which wasn't that long ago. But anyways, I used to be. But I get up, at, I get up and go to work and I have to be to work at 5 a.m. So I needed to figure out a way in which I could still do data capture 
and still pursue astrophotography, but try to automate the process as much as I could. And really, Nina provided that opportunity for me to work towards a fully automated rig. Now again, it, it depends on what you're going to do as to how you're going to use Nina. But for me, the big reason why Nina is because I wanted to automate my process. I wanted to be able to take the cover off my scope here and turn everything on and uh, remote desktop in to the little mini PC that I have here which has Nina loaded on it. Fire up Nina and load my sequence which I probably have already got or probably had from the night before. I can just, uh, because I saved out that sequence, I can load it back in and basically hit the play button and everything runs typically now like real life not everything works 100 percent all the time but i can get anywhere from like 80 to 90 percent um, ease of runtime using nina uh, only about 10 percent of the time do i have an issue that i have to debug and it's typically either because there was a Nina update or I need to update a plugin or there was a driver update and I have to go back and I have to revisit configurations and things of that sort. For most of my imaging runs, they run 90% of the time without any intervention from me whatsoever. I can just turn it on, make sure that everything's working and everything's going and go to bed and wake up the next morning and I've got my subs on my desktop computer ready and waiting. And for me, that's the best of all worlds, to be able to automate the data acquisition piece. And yes, it is fun to sit there and to be with your scope and, and to feel like somehow you're contributing to the data acquisition process, but to be honest with you, it's data acquisition it's really not much and I would prefer to have all these pieces of equipment which are fairly expensive letting them do their job that they're designed to do let the rotator here that I've got my Pegasus uh, Falcon rotator here let it help out in the framing my ZWO EAF which is right over here letting it figure out where the best focus is along with the software in Nina. Using my Deep Sky Dad uh, motorized flat panel, letting it work in terms of trying to create my flats and my dark flats. Letting my filter wheel here uh, move to the filters that I needed to move to, whether I'm doing a narrow band or I'm doing LRGB, but letting the filter wheel do its job rather than me having to come out here and manually change out filters like I used to have to do. Letting my guide camera system here, my guide scope and my guide camera here, letting it talk to the mount and letting it um, be able to track the image with as little RMS error as possible yeah, I'm a real fan that if you're going to invest money in all these pieces of equipment to letting those pieces of equipment shine and let them do what it is that they are designed to do. And so for me, my goal, why I am using Nina is so that I can automate my process. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments down below. And I'm going to be doing a series of videos about Nina. I've been using it now for almost two years. I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination and I've watched a lot of videos from a lot of folks who use Nina and I just wanted to bring my perspective to the table and show you how I'm using it for my application in case maybe you have a similar setup or a similar situation where you're trying to achieve a goal and we have similar goals, then maybe it can help you in your 
process and help you in your journey trying to set up Nina to work as best for you. So if you found any of this helpful, um, entertaining, interesting, please hit the like button down below. And if you want to be notified when new videos come out, hit the little bell button and feel free to subscribe. It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. <laughs> so until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.